week at MIPIM sees the launch of the Regeneration Master Plan for the Earls Court area. Drawn up by Sir Terry Farrell, the plan involves a 67-acre site around the Earls Court Exhibition Centre behind me, which will be demolished according to the Master Plan. In its place will be up to 8,000 new homes, along with a new road and a series of new shops and office space to improve the area. Working together with Cattle and Counties, who own more than 20 acres of the surrounding land, and two local authorities and Transport for London, the award was nominated for an International Architectural Prize at the MIPIM 2011 Awards. This was an international award that you've won. This is yes. quite a big deal. Why do you think your award won it above all the others from nine or ten other different countries? I think we concentrated more than uh, the others did on the town planning strategy. There was a lot of them were architectural solutions, um, or more architectural than planning. And I think I decided to make it purely a planning-based solution, a strategic planning solution. And I also concentrated on placemaking, so that it was about the idea of um, what holds the communities together um, in the spaces between the buildings, rather than the buildings themselves. I think that was probably uh, or how we uh, uh, caught the attention of the judges. So what's the next stage? Well, the next stage is then to build on that concept, uh, which I, the placemaking concept I call uh, Four Villages and a High Street, because that captures people's imagination. It kind of, because um, it's familiar. It's what you think of, of, of the best of London. The best parts of London have these traditions of high streets and urban villages. And so we, um, we based upon that kind of placemaking strategy and we, um, we have gone through uh, an explanation of that to various landowners and so on. Uh, we've been building up a consultation with local people gradually. Uh, so far, so good. Uh, people seem to think that we have caught the feeling of London in its layout and its streets and its squares and its uh, public places. And the next thing to do is that uh, we are going to go gradually more and more public with it, uh, uh, in the sense that the, the, the design and the plans are developing. It's not that we're holding anything back, but as, the, as we develop our thoughts, we will then um, take them out there and get feedback. And eventually, by the middle of this year, there will be uh, a planning application. Is it difficult working with so many different partners, with the, the public councils and obviously Capital and Counties and TfL? Has that been a, a, an easy process? I think the combination of different landowners, I'm very used to it. The first big complicated building I did was Charing Cross. It had three owners, very similar. The local authority, Westminster, uh, uh, the uh, British Rail, as they were then, owned the railway station, and the developers of Greycoats. And, uh, I'm used to working, uh, and when you do a lot of large-scale architecture and mass planning projects, there is invariably different owners, and um, I think you have to constantly, I, I like dealing with complexity and consultation and different people, uh, I think I, uh, that, that really is the territory I, I often work in, and um, I think a key to it is making sure everybody wins as far as you can make it uh, every, uh, uh, so that everybody wins and uh, I think good architecture, good town planning particularly is, is what's right for the place and if you keep that in your mind so that nobody's winning at other people's expense and it's all right for the place uh, then um, the, the, the planning and the architecture strategies speak for themselves and, and and take everybody with them. And so different landowners, different neighbours, different authorities, hopefully can see the sense and the practicality and, and, and the wisdom in it all. After a series of local consultations, the plan is to submit a planning application around mid-summer. This is Helen Roxburgh for Estates Gazette.